On this episode of Doing the Most, we are talking about our top three favorite recipes for the very beginner brewer. Homemade brews and various artists, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. Homebrewing is not as hard as I make it look. <laughs> okay. I try not to make it look hard, but sometimes it can look a little intimidating. But if you were to go spelunking back through our channel, you would see that we do actually every now and then sprinkle in some really beginner friendly recipes. And often, very often in our comments, folks say, why don't you do more beginner friendly stuff? Your stuff is so complex. I'm overwhelmed. This isn't simple. And sometimes I agree with you. And so in this case, we're going we're gonna to take a look back. I, I went through all of our old videos because I wanted to find the three most accessible and most destined for success recipes for someone who's never, ever brewed before. But before we get started, I want to thank today's video sponsor, Into the AM. As you might have seen, they make some hella cool homebrewing and booze themed shirts. And you all know me. You know I'm incredibly stylish. I'm on the cutting edge of fashion. It's a rocket ship inside of a carboy with all these beautiful vibrant colors. These shirts are hella cool. You're gonna see me wearing them throughout the rest of this video too. You should at least check out their site if you're interested in getting homebrewing gear because they make way cooler stuff than the stuff that's on my merch store. Their graphic tees are three for 60. Their basic tees are three for 49.95. There's links to all of this below and they've got a promo code. So if you go to their website slash DTM, use promo code DTM, you can also save an additional 10% on your order. Just go right after you watch this video, click the link in the description between the homebrewing stuff and the camping themed stuff. There are some cool as hell t-shirt designs and I was happy to pick up a bunch. But enough about cool t-shirts because we're here to talk about homebrewing. There's not going to be beer mentioned in this episode because this is about simple recipes. These are three of the most simple recipes for the very First time beginner brewer. You thought I was about to just jump into some recipes, didn't you? No, because it's doing the most. And as you know, at the beginning of each video, we set a little bit of ground rules for what we're gonna talk about. And here we're talking about beginner accessibility for recipes, easy, simple recipes for beginners. And I have three points that I would like to assert, make a recipe good for beginners. Number one, it should be tested and trusted. If you look out on the YouTubes, a lot of what you'll see in BrewTube is folks putting out recipes they've brewed one time. And that's because making BrewTube content is hard. It is a slog. It can take months and months to build up a repository of video assets for a single project and put it together. And so a lot of folks, understandably, default to putting out recipes that they've only brewed one time. The problem with that is they are not tested or trusted. And so while on the surface they may look beginner friendly and the person who brewed it may love it a lot, there is a chance that something could go sideways when somebody who's never brewed before brews it. And so when I was looking at my recipes trying to determine what I thought was the most beginner friendly, one of the lenses that I viewed my recipes through was whether or not I had tried it a handful of times to make sure that it was tested and that I knew that the result was consistent and trusted. Which brings us to point number two. The recipe should be repeatable. And one of the things that can get in the way of a recipe being repeatable is if it's not specific enough, if the directions are open for interpretation, if they're ingredients that are seasonal, or if they're ingredients that come in a lot of different varieties. And so repeatability is really important because if you can make it three or four times and it comes out the same way every time, that's a good indicator that when you're teaching it to somebody, they're going to be able to repeat it in the same way 
and get the same result. I had a fun interaction with one of our subscribers and big supporters of the channel, Jake, last summer when he presented me with a bottle of Acerglen, the ace recipe from our channel, and wanted me to taste his version. And it tasted identical to the bottle I had brought, which told me that the recipe was tested, trusted, and repeatable. Number three, also kind of piggybacking on that, the ingredients should be accessible. And I see this a lot in my comments where people say, I don't have access to that nutrient. I don't have access to that specific powdered acid. I don't have the tannin that you used in the recipe. And I get it. I'm using a lot of specific gear and ingredients that I've collected over many years of home brewing. And so there's a chance that I'm brewing with something that you may not have, especially if you live in a country where this stuff is harder to get than here in America, where home brewing is relatively pervasive. So when I was looking for these three recipes, I honed in on recipes where the ingredients were incredibly accessible, kind of no matter where you live. So let's get down to it. These are the three recipes that we chose. Number one, the simple cider. This recipe and the next one are both from our video we did on the Mr. Beer Kit a long time ago. And that video shows both of these recipes as two gallon versions. We're gonna pare it down here for one gallon batches because typically beginner brewers are brewing in one gallon batches. The ingredients for this simple cider are one gallon of apple juice, the juice of half a lemon, and wine yeast. At bottling, one teaspoon of erythritol per bottle and one teaspoon of sugar per bottle. Now, don't get caught up in this. Erythritol is perfectly fine, even though it's got a big long word name. Erythritol is a naturally derived, non-fermentable sweetener that comes from corn. And it's perfectly safe to consume in moderation, just like alcohol. The great thing about erythritol is you can back sweeten it, then add that teaspoon of sugar. The erythritol won't ferment, but the sugar will. And once it's fermented inside that 12 ounce bottle, it will leave you with carbonation, meaning you have a nice sparkling drink. So with the simple cider, you would let it ferment all the way to completion. And then once it was done after two to three weeks, it should mostly drop clear and you can bottle it on top of your erythritol and your sugar. Then in about three to four weeks, you'll have sparkling, delicious, sweet cider. And again, we have videos on all of the projects that are in this video. So there'll be links in the description where you can find more information on process stuff. We will also put a link in the description to our video on other non-fermentable sweeteners. So if for whatever reason you can't find erythritol, you might be able to find a substitute that you could use in its place. Number two, a simple session mead. This is a mead that is served sparkling. So similar to the sparkling cider we just talked about, but you get a mead that has nice, rich honey flavors, a nice pop of freshness, and a good sparkle that helps make it a nice, easy drinking, crushable and crispy drink. Let's take a look at the ingredients. The ingredients for our simple session mead are 1.25 pounds of honey, the juice of half a lemon, half a pint of apple juice, half a cup of black tea, a wine yeast, and water up to one gallon. When bottling, you'll add one teaspoon of erythritol per bottle and one teaspoon of sugar per 12 ounce bottle. So again, we're using erythritol as our non-fermentable sweetener, and we're using a little bit of sugar at bottling so we can get some nice sparkling carbonation. What I really love about this recipe is it comes out really well balanced in a similar way to if you made the same recipe with more advanced ingredients like powdered acids, powdered tannins. And even though this is a mead, you can a little bit get away with not putting nutrients in here because it's low ABV. Now that said, this is the type of thing that really lends itself to a little bit of mead nutrient, whether that's boiled bread yeast or fermido or something more advanced like Fermate K or Diammonium Phosphate. A little bit of nutrient can really help get you across the finish line without a really slow fermentation. But I have done this recipe a few times with no nutrients and it's worked out okay. It does take two to three weeks to ferment though. Check out the full video on this project for more information on how to make this one pop. And finally, number three, the Valheim Tasty Mead. I really wanted 
to have a wine on this list that was just like a fruit wine or a grape wine. But man, the Valheim Tasty Mead, again, another sparkling drink. All three of these are sparkling drinks, actually, now that I think about it. It drinks like a sparkling wine, but it's got a little bit of that honey character in it. So I'm just gonna pretend it fits as a sparkling wine and go with it. Here are the ingredients. One pound of honey, one pound of raspberries, half a pound of blueberries, a wine yeast, and water to one gallon. At bottling, you'll want a tablespoon of erythritol per 12 ounce bottle and a teaspoon of sugar per bottle. Again here, erythritol to back sweeten and sugar at bottling to carbonate. All three of these recipes you would want to use good swing top bottles for or crown caps to hold in that pressure. What I love about this one is you get to experiment with brewing with fruit, in this case whole fruit, and you get to learn some of those things like punching the cap and racking through fruit, etc. It's just a really good learning exercise brew that helps you get acquainted with some of those processes. And it makes a really, really good sparkling mead on the other end of it. I've had a few people's versions of this where they've brewed my recipe. And even with the kind of seasonality of fruit, it always comes out really, really crushable. If you've made it, Go down in the comments and let people know how much you love the Valheim Tasty Mead. It's a stupid, simple, self-balancing recipe that really requires not much input from the brewer to make it good. And so that's why it makes this list. So those are our top three, the Simple Cider, the Simple Session Mead, and our Valheim Tasty Mead. Three delicious sparkling home brews that you can make as one gallon batches and make successfully, usually, your very first time home brewing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will visit our sponsor and check out their cool brewing and booze and camping and space and nostalgia themed t-shirts. Their stuff is super cool and the links are in the description. Please go click the link and check out their store. I'm sure you'll find something that you love. And again, you can get 10% off. If you enjoyed this video, click that subscribe button down there if you haven't already ring that notification bell over there and then go up here and join our discord follow us on instagram check out our website all of those things i really would appreciate if you join our discord community and become part of the cool collective of homebrewers hanging out over there it's one of my favorite places to be on the internet i'm a little biased but you know comes with the territory until next time happy brewing especially if it's your first time brewing happy brewing and enjoy the fruits of your labor. I know I am. Cheers.